Hey everyone, this is Zach and I'm here at InfoSec World and I have Giovanni Vigna with me and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself. Yes, so um, as you said correctly, I'm Giovanni Vigna, I'm a professor of computer science at UC Santa Barbara, the University of California in Santa Barbara. And in my career, I focus mostly on uh, system security research. So I research and develop novel techniques to uh, combat uh, attacks, uh, malware, and other forms of misuse of the internet. And in this process, instead of approaching it from a theoretical point of view, using, for example, cryptography or theoretical models, mm -hmm. I develop actual systems that do things and sometimes collect measurement and so forth. Um, so how did you get into the IT field? What so, yeah, I started uh, being interested in computers very young, like many of the people mm -hmm. who are mm -hmm. uh, geeks and nerds, mm -hmm. the oh, yeah. techies that love uh, uh, this, this thing. And I've always been interested in security in particular. I mean, I love computers in every uh, possible ways um, from doing, you know, art, to writing code for the sake of writing code. But security is really exciting for me because there's always that sort of like adversarial uh, setup where you either have to break something or you have to protect something from right. being broken into right. and, and that adds excitement. So it's, it's always new. How did you get your, your start in the field? So in the field, I, I followed a, a very standard academic path. So uh, first of all, I went to an engineering school, uh, the Politecnico di Milano in Italy, and I got first my uh, master's there, and then I got my PhD. Both of them were in electronic engineering, but yeah. they were with a slant on software development. So yeah. it was more similar to a computer science degree that you would get here. So I, would, I don't wanna confuse people right. about that career particular career path. So, uh, and after that, I went for a postdoc uh, at UC Santa Barbara. And after a couple of years, I was hired there as a tenure track professor. And then, you know, I became tenured and all that good stuff. Oh, yeah. And I kept doing research since then. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, if you were going to, you know, give someone advice who wanted to get into the field, not necessarily the security part yet, but just get into the IT field, um, Nowadays, what what kind of what type of advice would you would you give them? You know, what what kind of path would you maybe tell them to take? Or I, I think that um, a degree in computer science is really a big help um, because uh, it might seem too academic for an IT job, but it's not actually uh, a computer science. Even I mean, the undergrad uh, work that you do as part of the uh, computer science curriculum gives you the tools to. Uh, go beyond just using tools to achieve something in information technology allows you, for example, to code. And nowadays, mm -hmm. fundamentally, every tool in IT provides an API that you can script. For example, right. you can write b Python code. It does amazing thing yeah. with a Google services drive. You can modify an Excel spreadsheet in the cloud and then take the results and put together a form. Oh, yeah. And unless you understand programming well, this becomes very difficult. And so what I would suggest is programming is a form of meta tooling that is really important for IT. Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, actually really excited when, when Microsoft started developing PowerShell and, and really putting that out because uh, I gave you lots of options there and, and a lot of ability on the back end. And that's not, you know, some people kind of say, well, that's not really coding, but you It is coding, you're, absolutely. You know, yeah, some people are just, they're very particular on that, you know? No, 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 I, dis um, I disagree. I think actually scripting code like that with Bash, with, with mm -hmm. PowerShell, it's one of the most powerful forms of coding because even though maybe it's not as uh, structure and, um, Componentize as you know C plus plus or Java. Right. It allows you in a very short time to build prototypes to demonstrate particular functionality. Right. So it's very useful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what type of certifications would you recommend? You know, you, you definitely touched on the degree, which is excellent. But is, are there any certifications that you think are, are really valuable in the field right now that you could recommend? Uh, you know, you would be surprised how uninformed I am about professional certification from sure. that point of view. Uh, I, I am an academic. Um, so uh, I can tell you that, I mean, I think that when I look at, I'm also an entrepreneur, I have a company, mm -hmm. and when I look uh, at hiring uh, in IT, fundamentally I look 
at the skills that somebody with a computer science degree would have. Uh, if then there are particular certification, for example, for managing routers or understanding how to configure networks, those are um, very, uh, very important because they show that you are able to actually handle very careful, very careful, very critical pieces of equipment that uh, require a lot of know-how. Do you want to touch it all on your, your entrepreneurship? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I am the classic example of the academic that decided to transfer to industry uh, its own research. So uh, a lot of the malware analysis uh, that we did uh, as part of um, our research work at UC Santa Barbara became the inspiration for this company. It's called Last Line, like in the last line of defense. And the basic idea is to develop the, a novel approach to analyzing malware in the context of a particular network in order to understand not only if the malware is good or bad, but also what is the implication of having that malware in your network. I always make the example that, you know, normal detection systems say, hey, you got hit by a bullet. We try to say, yes, you got hit by a bullet, and this is the implication on your right. body, yeah. <laughs> your body as a whole. Because That's sometimes awesome. it's very important to understand if it's a critical yeah. wound or it's just, you know, a, you know, a flesh wound. wound. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Um, do you want to talk any more about that? Because that's actually really, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You can if you want. I mean, oh, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Wanna, um, no, and I and I think that a good example. Um, what I like of, uh, of Last Line is that, first of all, we could take the sort of innovation DNA that we have from the research world into a company. And so a lot of the technical group within the company is made of academics. So we have an approach to uh, problems that is uh, never just, oh, let's push to market something because we have too much. We really try to look at new problems, understanding uh, where is uh, the, the threat gonna move to so that we can be ready before it even evolves in that direction. And I think that's something that is important and it's sometimes underestimate. The fact that you have to be not a complete visionary, say, oh, in 50 years, this is gonna happen, but a two to five year visionary where you understand what the threat could be so you're ready for that evolution. And I think that's something that we have done uh, reasonably well. Uh, the other thing that I like is that uh, by creating an academic environment within the company, we have a very open um, exchange between people. We also try to foster uh, a very diverse environment in which we try to include uh, minorities and female and male different genders so that um, the company as a whole can be better because it is proven that the more diverse a company is, the more effective it is. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So um, in addition to you know, being a professor of computer science and being an entrepreneur, having co-founded this company, Last Line, I also uh, founded a hacking team called Shellfish. Fundamentally, it, was, it started as a group of my grad students going to hacking competitions. These hacking competitions usually are in the form of attack, defense, capture the flag, mm -hmm. where there are a bunch of teams. They're given each right. of them the same virtual machine. You have to find vulnerabilities in your version and use that knowledge to break into everybody else. Um, and it's, it's really fun. And uh, but by observing capture the flag competition, I noticed that it's a fantastic educational tool. If you want to learn about uh, <coughs> IT, uh, capture the flag and especially IT security, capture the flags uh, allow you to uh, uh, learn more because the competitive nature of these competitions really fosters uh, putting in extra effort, being creative, right. and especially being able to act under duress. Uh, uh, when you participate yeah. in a live capture the flag, you've been attacked constantly, which is probably an exaggeration with respect to your everyday IT right. security world, but um, <clears throat> it is a good exercise to say, oh my God, I just got breached. What do I do next? How do I protect myself? How do I lock this person out, out of my machine? And so I think that CTFs are, are being recognized more as educational tools, but uh, we're really working uh, in trying to create frameworks so that even people that are not super experts in hacking and they don't go to DAFCON capture the flag and things like that uh, can run their competition and use that as a tool in the education of IT, IT security. Awesome.
That's awesome. That's really valuable information. Is there anything else that you kind of want to add as far as, you know, people who are looking to get into this field and, um, you know, maybe off the cuff advice, not necessarily, yeah, you know, yeah. here's the path you take, but, you know, what should they do? You know, what yeah. should they look out for? I, I, I think that one thing that uh, I, I hope that people and especially the female population will get, don't get discouraged mm -hmm. by the IT yeah. field. Uh, it's, uh, it's a field that is still uh, mostly male dominated. Okay. And sometimes it's difficult for uh, a female IT security expert to uh, participate and assert because they have to overcome certain cultural aspects that are not very fun. And uh, I think that is, there is a call for action to uh, the male population to make it you know, a very uh, uh, open and uh, welcoming, uh, welcoming environment mm -hmm. for everybody and for women to you know, be strong and continue to, to try to be there because we need women yeah. to participate in this community as oh, much as possible. I agree, I yeah. agree. I've so actually, don't get discouraged. Yeah, no, that's great, great advice. Having actually, a daughter, I want my daughter, oh, she yeah. loves computers, yeah. and I don't want her to be, yeah. you know, like discouraged from being a hacker or a great IT security right. person or IT manager because of the culture. So we have right. to change the culture as uh, some of the male representative, but also we need women to be strong and participate more and more. Right, and I see a lot of that culture change happening with the younger people who are moving into this field now. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's come a long way, Yes. really. Um, actually, the last few jobs that I've worked, I've, we've had women in our department, and you know, it's great because it shows that diversity, it shows that sure. anybody can do it, and, and yeah. everybody can do it. And We should have a 50% you know, uh, composition of the field. Yeah. And we're not there yet, and we have to work towards it. Yeah, I completely agree, 100%. Yeah, That's great. Awesome. So one thing that I, uh, I would suggest people, especially very young people, they're excited about this, is to build stuff. Only by building a lot of stuff, you get the experience right. of, you know, using the right tools, sometimes using the wrong tools so you can appreciate yeah, the right yeah, tool right. afterwards. But building stuff, just reading stuff and uh, studying stuff in an abstract way, it is useful. You're still exposed to things, learning at language, but on, only when you build real things or even just a game or a website or some crazy interactive you know web assembly based bitcoin miner mm -hmm. you will actually legal bitcoin miner yeah. i mean <laughs> you, you will really grasp why it is so fun yeah no that's great advice and that uh, one bit of advice that i always like to give is you know lab every day you know yeah. you can build a home lab whether yeah. it's you know you're, you're virtualizing machines or, or or not you know having that that home kind of base where you can break yeah. stuff your and gym. learn it that it's is, your gym yeah, yeah. Exactly. oh yeah exactly oh, that's a great super way to important. put it your, your gym yeah your 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 mental gym yes I, I i i i usually have you know three or four virtual machine running on my laptop i have no. an ubuntu machine but i do my you know business stuff on a mac but then you have to run oh, malware yeah. on windows and so you you know yeah well, that's get that's a lot great. of memory <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I have like 20 gigs on my desktop at home, and yeah, that's once the way I spin go. up like you know, two or three virtual machines, I'm like, ah, I think I need more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely. It's funny how that works, but it is very useful. Yeah, definitely. So that's great advice. So okay, great. Anything else? Or? No, thank you for having me here. I enjoyed our conversation. Yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So. Great. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you.